Hello viewers and welcome to Pioneer of Success. Continuing with the series on Raman spectroscopy, this video is focused on how molecules show Raman effect. A molecule consists of a positively charged nuclei with a negatively charged electron cloud surrounding it. When this molecule is placed in an external electromagnetic field, it experiences a force in turn to the incoming electric field and this force is exerted both on the negatively charged electron as well as to the positively charged nuclei. Since electrons are lighter in weight, it responds more quickly to the force exerted by the electric field and thus it gets displaced from its positively charged core in a direction opposite to that of the incoming electric field. Now this uh, displacement or the separation of the charges causes a temporary dipole inside the molecule which is called as the induced dipole and the whole phenomena of the formation of this induced dipole is termed as the polarization of the molecule. Now this direction of the polarization of the molecule is decided by the direction of the electric field and thus with an oscillating electric field the oscillation of the electric field causes a change in the direction of the polarization of the molecule continuously with the variation of the electric field. Now this causes, a, uh, this causes the electron cloud of the molecule to oscillate in the same tune as that of the oscillating electric field. Now as per the classical theory of electrodynamics, any oscillating charges which is in this case is the induced dipole can cause a time varying electric field. Now this time varying electric field in turn generates a time varying magnetic field as per the Maxwell's equation. And thus this is how the polarization of the molecule, its oscillation of the induced dipole re-radiates an electromagnetic field. Now this re-radiation of the electromagnetic field which is decided by the induced dipole moment of the molecule is, dis is, um, is dependent on the two prime factors that is the incoming electric field which is an external factor and the polarizability of the molecule which is an intrinsic factor of the molecule. The strength of the electric field decides how strongly it will be able to polarize the molecule whereas its oscillation that is the frequency will decides the oscillation of the income of the molecule which is getting polarized. Now the polarizability of the molecule decides the strength of the induced dipole that is the dipole moment that is for example if a molecule is having more electrons that is which is bigger in size than the smaller molecule it will be having a lower number of electrons and thus for a same electric field the larger molecule will be able to polarize more as it has more number of electrons. Similarly, the electron distribution of the molecule, the type of bond it has that is sigma or the pi bond and also the symmetricity or the asymmetricity of the molecule which decides the electron distribution over it actually decides the strength of the polarization that the molecule will experience in effect of the incoming electric field. Now based on these all parameters there will be two conditions. One is the favorable condition where the molecule will get positively polarized, will have higher uh, strength of polarization and in an unfavorable condition where the poly molecule will not get strongly polarized, will have a temporary polarization and the strength of the polarization will be very weak. Now in one in an unfavorable condition where the molecule is not getting strongly polarized or the incoming electric field cannot change the energy state of the molecule, in such cases the energy of the re-radiated electromagnetic field from the oscillating dipole is same as that of the incident dipole and thus this type of scattering is termed as the elastic scattering where the energy of the re-radiation is same as that of the incident electromagnetic field. This type of scattering is also termed as the Rayleigh scattering. However, in cases when the molecules get strongly polarized in the presence of the external electric field such that it causes the molecule to shift to a new virtual energy state, in such cases the molecules uh, when it oscillates it re-radiates re an uh, electromagnetic field which has a different energy as compared to that of the incident electric field. And this type of scattering is termed as the inelastic scattering and is also called as the Raman scattering. Now comparing these two type of scattering that is Rayleigh scattering and the Raman scattering we can see that the Rayleigh scattering has the energy of the radiated and the incident electric field 
the same energy and thus it says that it, the incoming electromagnetic field is not interacting much with that of the molecule to which it is interacting and uh, which causes no change in the energy of the radiated and the incident electric field and thus it does not provide any information of the molecule to which it is interacting however in case of raman scattering in such cases the energy of the radiated uh, is uh, energy of the radiated electromagnetic field is different to that of the incident electric field and thus it it says that when it is interacting with the molecule it has uh, it it has causes some changes in the molecule which is which is causing a change in the energy of the electromagnetic field now the radiated electromagnetic field the energy of the wavelength the frequency of the radiated electric field has uh, is intrinsic property of the molecule because the polarization of the molecule actually decides the energy of the you know, energy of the radiated electric field and thus for different molecular state different molecule different chemical bonding different composition will decides the Uh, will decide a different energy of the radiated electromagnetic field and thus this kind of scattering actually provides a fingerprint of the molecule which helps us in identifying different types of the molecules as well as molecular interactions now this kind of raman scattering is a very weak process that is one in 10 million that is 0.00001% of the incident light only exhibits raman scattering however being so weak in nature it provides a significant information of the molecules to which it is interacting and because of this versatile nature it has gained a nobel prize in 1930 to its discoverer sir chandrashekhar venkatesh raman Thank you for watching and stay tuned for further videos.